Banks have recently come under fire after claims that black customers were made to pay higher interest rates on their home loans um, than white consumers. Now, the Black Business Council is expected to meet with the Banking Association of South Africa and other stakeholders over alleged discrimination of black home homeowners by FNB and other banks. Black homeowners have also approached the Western Cape Equality Court to hear that matter. Joining us in the studio to talk more about property ownership is South African DJ Tem Bankosi, better known as Euphonic and businessman at Dem Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you so much for your time this yep, morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. You know, um, it's obviously been quite a contested issue since reports of or allegations that certain banks were charging black homeowners higher interest rates um, than others. And like we, like we said in the introduction, home ownership is a particular point of pride for black people, but also it speaks to more, more matters of um, security. Mm -hmm. um, for one's family, for one's you know children and grandchildren, providing some kind of legacy. Um, euphonic, actually, tell me what you prefer me to call you. Yeah, well, call up you, yeah. to you, Timber. Euphonic, it's all good. So, Euphonic, <laughs> you know, from your perspective, you you started out as a DJ. You're a university dropout. You DJed. You made a huge success of that. But it didn't stop there. You've also used your obvious talents mm -hmm. that we all know you for to pivot to property. Yeah. Tell me why that specifically, and why people. I mean, as a sort of someone who dips into the Twitter streets from time to time, um, when you are giving property advice from time to time, people are kind of like skeptical sometimes, um, <laughs> or want to kind of argue with you a bit about it. But you know, what? Um, why do that? Why pivot into property? The first thing, and and how are you doing it? Yeah. So basically, um, I was DJing and making some money, and mm -hmm. I wanted to save and grow my money at the same time. And when I was asking like people that I know and trust and just basically reading, mm -hmm. and reading is an important thing, Absolutely. Um, I realized that like there's a thing called property, um, which while you're investing in it actually like grows in, and matures in mm -hmm. value as well. So I started re researching on property and it was an asset class that I preferred and liked. So I bought my first house, mm -hmm. um, which I then um, turned into uh, student accommodation. Mm -hmm. um, then I started buying flats and apartments around Auckland Park, Melville, and I quickly learned that actually like what is labeled as an investment, if I buy a property for, four, for 400000 and I make 3.8 3 in rent, minus the levies, minus the bond, my, it's not an investment. Mm. You know what it's I mean? A yeah, it's a liability. My money is actually better sitting in the bank. And that's what you find is the case with a lot of people that don't know about property. You know, yeah. um, I do property talks with uh, Bolin once a month. Mm -hmm. Last year we did 240 people and we do like 20 people at a time. And what really comes across when you speak to people about property and try to educate them about property is that one, people don't read, mm -hmm. and two, they don't want to go out and get the knowledge. You know, mm -hmm. it's very important to understand that the onus is on you mm -hmm. to, to understand that information and get that information. And yes, like part of the fundamental issues are that we don't have this kind of education mm -hmm. in high school. The first time you see a bond is after university, you know? If uh, at all, for yeah, many people, you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like the, the onus is really like on you to educate yourself. Like I, I, I even ask people that if, um, for instance, you're a TV presenter, right? Mm. Would you allow a heart surgeon that knows as much about heart surgery uh, as you know about TV presenting to, to do heart surgery on you? Mm -hmm. And if you don't and can't, then you shouldn't be buying property with no knowledge. Mm. You shouldn't be doing anything without that level of knowledge because mm -hmm. also, not, uh, not, never mind how expensive it is, it's also like a 20-year commitment. Mm. That's how long a bond is. Absolutely. You know, so like you can't just like quickly just sign and, and like without reading the details. Well, let's, let's speak to that. I mean, Deborah, you know, um, you, you're talking about education and, 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 and getting knowledge, but the reasons for, we can talk about the fact that there, it's a generational issue. Mm -hmm. There are systemic reasons for ignorance, number one, because you don't have a dad who owned a property because we've always been renting from, you know, um, the municipality or the local government, you know, historically. There are those issues, right? But here we are, it's 2019. We do have issue, we're talking about um, a black homeowners who are charged exorbitant interest mm -hmm. rates. What has been your experience or, uh, of people interrogating what an interest rate is, having a relationship with that bank, and actually saying, um, why have my repayments gone up by 800 rand this month? And what's this escalation where I'm earning 6,000 rand a month and suddenly almost three quarters of my income has suddenly disappeared to, to these rates that I don't quite understand? Why are people or homeowners sitting around you know, in misery but not 
talking directly to that bank or interrogating okay. what's going on? It's, it's because people are seeing the bank as the enemy, mm. uh, seeing people have got this perception that banks are out there to get them. Mm. Um, and for me, I think a bank, um, it's actually your business partner. You may, or knowing or understanding how to use the bank effectively could actually work to your advantage. Mm. The problem with this is that, you know, when we go to a bank, they say, Sanala, Sanala, Sanala. You know, you yeah. never actually yeah, read yeah. What, yeah. what you're signing. Yeah. Don't we all know that you, you take a contract home, you pour over it, maybe mm. you get someone else to read it for you and give you yeah. some advice? We, is we, that common <laughs> knowledge or we, am I taking a lot of things It is common together? knowledge, mm. but, but reality is we do not use that. And is the owners then not on a yeah, bank, yeah, for yeah. instance, yeah. all that body to say, no, take this home, take the, your time the, and read the it? The bank yeah. is running a business. A lot of people it don't is. understand. Mm. The bank is running a business. The bank makes money from borrowing people money. You know, and I think like the other big problem with anyone that buys property is that like we tend to not separate in our minds that I'm buying a property so I'll come to you can I please buy your property mm. you'll say yes it's a million rand it's a million rand for this property what do I need to buy this property mm. I need money right so mm. who am I gonna get money from I must go to a bank to go get money so there's a difference between the property mm. that you want and the money that you need to get the property Absolutely. so you go borrow money mm -hmm. to pay for the property that mm. you want banks are private institutions they're running a business they're not here for you and the house that you want to yeah. buy. They're here to borrow you money for the assets or whatever it is that mm. you want to buy and make interest on, on that money. And I think, like, there's a political party that is talking about it at the moment in South Africa that, like, let's have a South African bank that can mm. serve South African people because mm. then at that level we'll be able to get favorable um, home loans and favorable interest rates yeah. from yeah. the South African bank. But you, as us three here can start a bank, and what are we doing? We're running a business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's speak to so the issue of, of ethics and mora morality, for mm. instance. If the National Black um, Consumer Council uh, is able to get its desire, that is the president instituting um, an inquiry uh, yeah, an inquiry into um, mm. the issue of higher, uh, high interest rates for black uh, customers or consumers versus white consumers, there is, an, uh, there is an ethical question that we have to deal with. No, definitely yeah? So how then do we move forward? Forward as consumers or as people who are going to go to the bank and need to work in partnership with them to attain and build those legacies or just to secure um, secure uh, you know some, some kind of safety net for our families how do we move from the legacy of the combative relationship yeah I think we can only move from that if ever really our government um, represent us from a policy point of view mm -hmm. um, obviously it is an, uh, an unethical issue and mm -hmm. it's something that I think if ever we as well we understood the power of working as one because mm -hmm. you could imagine, if ever, let's say, like Euphonic has said, all three of us decide to start a bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, people now are buying property using stock fails. People are doing all sorts of different things. That is as far as being unity. Mm -hmm. And right now we can go to the bank and it's all well and good that we can sit behind our screens and tweet and this and that. Mm -hmm. But if ever we don't the one that actually standing and behind, uh, behind yeah. the bank and actually boycott to say right now this is unethical yeah. and we want to be represented equally as mm -hmm. South Africans. And right now we're seeing the bank as, as the enemy half of the time, but people do not know that you can actually mm -hmm. use the bank to your advantage yeah, to absolutely. actually acquire mm -hmm. some of the assets. Right, right. That's why people now culturally we are taught to be afraid of credit, be mm -hmm. afraid of debt. Yeah. Yeah. And Scholar. people they do not understand there's bad debt, there's good debt. Mm -hmm. There's debt that could make you money. Mm -hmm. Where else you look at our white counterparts, they're using debt to create wealth. Mm -hmm. Leverage. They, <laughs> you know what I'm yes, saying? Yeah. They're yeah. using wealth to create uh, to create wealth. And it's something that we do not uh, understand. And for me, I mean, I know that I've taken the liberty to go to some of these institutions to say, right now, why are you not investing to our people? Those that you're investing on, you're taking advantage of, or there's mm -hmm. just a minority. I always say it's very cold at the top, yeah. you know? And the bottom is very overcrowded. And they say, we do not have black people. Mm. And that's why I think, I mean, we, uh, some of us have taken the initiative to actually do these workshops and trainings. Yeah. Tell, me how, tell me how, elaborate on that. How did you get involved in the property market? We've got a bit of insight yeah. into yeah. you, uh, Temba. But how did you get involved in the property market? And why have you made it your business to educate people um, as much as possible okay. about the value of and understanding the market? Okay. For me, it's something that was very close to my heart. The only thing that I wanted to do growing up was to build my mother's house because mm. I grew up in an informal settlement um, in Wadville. So, but little did I know that today I'll be able to provide hundreds of people with houses. I actually bought my first house earning 2.5 because yeah. people are thinking it, it costs to actually That sounds buy. like an impossibility. Yes, yeah. right? It sounds yeah. absolutely impossible. And, and, and simple thing, people they do not know that right 
right now there's a government subsidy that if you earn a minimum of 3,000, yeah. mm. government can give you money to <laughs> GF free money, 122,000. Hey, listen, 000. I'm learning yeah. to that, that, that could go towards yeah. your deposit, that could go towards your legal fees. Mm. It all goes to an understanding. And for me, this is a property that I was staying in. Uh, but for me, it was at, at the time I thought I'm buying an asset. Because remember, Timber, when we grew up, they say when you're buying a house, you're buying an investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, in reality, I didn't understand that a house that I stay in is not an investment, it's a liability. Mm. So, but the beauty about property that we're able to maximize, what I did is that I built rooms. Um, outside the, uh, that house and yeah, started tenants. putting tenants Illegally. that were helping <laughs> complement. <laughs> that's a story for another day. That were helping to complement, um, you know, the rent or the bond that I was paying, even leaving me with surplus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So reality is, people out there they thinking it costs money and it doesn't have money. I think Temba will back me up. Do you know in South Africa we've got over 150 property funders? That yeah, are looking for people like the, the, me the, and you to actually lot. get to and that's why I use the heart the surgeon um, analogy mm. that like if you want to be in property or buy a house, you mm. need to know as much as you possibly can yes. about it. Um, I mean, like also people don't know that you can walk into your bank and say, "Hi, my name is Temba. Mm. Please, can I speak to the bank manager?" Absolutely. You say to the bank manager, "Listen, I want to buy a house that's worth a, uh, one million. Mm. This is how my finances look today. True. What do they need to look like in yeah. order for me to be able to?" You know, if you're going to go into Essentially the asking for help, guide me, show yeah, me. If you're going to go on a website ropes. and download a, a home loan application, you're just going to be treated like another number. So mm. walk into the mm. bank, have a relationship with the bankers mm. and with the people that mm. work inside the bank. When you submit an application, give it to a human mm. being that's going yeah. to send it to credit yeah. and then be able to, to talk and justify. And then also, like, I don't know why people don't do this, but you can. When you're signing a, a legal contract, the onus is on you to say, listen, can I see the... Uh, bond grant that I'm going to sign. Can I take it to my lawyer? Can mm -hmm. I go away with it for two mm -hmm. days and come back to you in two days with my own notes? Yes. So and amend that. Yeah. Contract. So what the bank gives you, it doesn't mean like that's it. So yeah. You stick to it. You know what I'm saying? It's a contract. Also, people change. don't understand mm. interest rates. Yeah. It's very important to understand. Well, let's talk rates. about that before before I let you, uh, gentlemen, go. Let's talk about the sort of top three pitfalls, right? That people sort of walk into blindly. Um, you get granted a bond, and then your repayments are three thousand five hundred rand in, every month. But no one talks rates, taxes, utilities, yeah. um, and no one's worrying about maintenance yeah. of a property. The, for instance, what are the sort of um, key mistakes that we tend to make and um, you know you've just moved into the burbs maybe as a young black someone yeah, with, with, <laughs> what should you be looking with at that let's take a let's take a big step back mm -hmm. and let's start with you Such by yourself yeah. in your house <laughs> or wherever you are mm -hmm. be honest with yourself mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying say to myself um, I'm earning X amount I've got this much spare every single month mm -hmm. you know and then go into the research of finding out what all the costs are involved in owning a house like Transfer duty is out there, it's open, you can work it out before you even leave your house. Mm -hmm. You know, so understand all the costs fully. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, you know, like I see it a lot with people that buy cars. You walk into the dealership and you say, I have X to spend, right? The dealership is not your friend, they're not there for you. They're going to work out your repayments according to what you've, mm -hmm. you can spend. So even if the car could have actually cost you four and a half at X percent, they'll gear it up to or move it up to. 6,000 rand, Absolutely. and then what you have done is that you, because you didn't take, um, you didn't do the proper research, now you don't know how much the rates and taxes are, how much the levies are, you haven't ma taken into account um, maintenance, you haven't taken into account bond costs, you haven't taken into account transfer duty, um, lawyers' fees, agents' commission, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So it's like, educate yourself about this thing that you're about to do. Like, w I can't call myself a mm -hmm. doctor, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I call myself a DJ because I've been doing this yeah. thing and I'm like I know everything about being a DJ yeah. so if you like if you're not a heart surgeon don't <laughs> operate on people do you know what I'm there saying? There we go. Yeah. Pitfalls number one. Number two um, specifically to the issue um, of what brought us here today mm. um, black home owners being charged exorbitant rates compared to their white counterparts. Mm. How, how do you deal with this if you find yourself in a position where you feel that this is not quite right? Um, I'm not getting the interest rate that mm. I think I should be um, I should be acquiring and in fact this just this looks completely absurd. Okay. What's the go-to um, Resolution. Okay, the resolution there is that speak to your bank, mm -hmm. um, you know, to try and resolve that, to say, I'm realizing one, two, three, four, and five, um, you know, that's a pitfall yeah. in terms of the agreement that I have with you. Then if ever you do not find pleasure in that, then there's what we call the bank ombudsman. So the bank ombudsman represents and takes up cases for ordinary people on your behalf yeah. with the bank. I mean, we've got the Bank Association of South Africa where, from an ethical point of view, represents all the bank equally to say, 
according to the bank standards that we've set, is, is this particular bank following it? And if you do not find pleasure there, I mean, I think the, the ombudsman, it's the last issue. Yeah. And right now, there's people like us that are funding um, the ombudsman to actually represent you and take up your case. You do not need to even have money um, mm. to, 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 represent, uh, mm. to represent you. Yeah. All yeah. right, fantastic. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. That was uh, DJ Euphonic and a businessman at Deboho Mafodi talking about property and uh, how to invest should you want to. Up next, we talk about the power of social media. You're watching Morning News today. Stay with us.